On today's episode of The Lucid Lens, there was discussion on UFOs in the European Parliament, uh, an article on UFO visits near nuclear sites in India, University of Ohio professors having lectures on UFOs, and Congressman Eric Burleson spoke with journalist Matt Laszlo on a number of topics, um, most notably that Congress was shared two locations by the Inspector General where non-human craft are supposedly housed. Yeah! There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. Greetings, beautiful people, you marvelous citizens of the planet Earth, and welcome to the Lucid Lens. I'm just a normal guy talking about some crazy stuff that's going on in the world that not enough people are paying attention to. Um, yeah, talking about the fact that discussions about UFOs are happening in the United States Congress and around the world. Um, did you know the U.S. Congress has passed four pieces of legislation in as many years about UFOs? Yeah, that's really going down. If you're new to the channel and you like what you're hearing, uh, you like the content, subscribe. Leave a like, dislike. I think. Is that how it works? Anyway, leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think about the phenomenon, these stories. What do you think's really going on out there? All right, with that down, let's get into our first story today. So story number one comes to us from India. And I think this was initially posted on this DT Next Indian publication, and it's been subsequently picked up by numerous sources, including the uh, Daily Mail let me just scroll down real quick and, and read a little bit of this. Saeed, an engineering graduate, has seen UFOs more than 10 times in the uh, Kunda Klum uh, area in August 2023. Uh, Sabir believes that UFOs roving near nuclear establishments is a global phenomenon and said countries like the U.S. have already started taking it very seriously. A new legislation under the U.S. National Defense Authorization Act terminated the UAP secrecy. The act mandates spotting of UFO well, UAPs can be reported to Congress in both classified and classi unclassified forms regularly. The act also lists specific requirements to report UAP incidents related to nuclear weapons. The details of the number of reported incidents and descriptions thereof of UAP associated with military nuclear assets, including strategic nuclear weapons and nuclear-powered ships and submarines and facilities or assets associated with the production, transportation, or storage of nuclear weapons or components thereof, along with nuclear energy production facilities, are to be regularly updated to the Congress as per the new U.S. Act. Uh, when contacted, Saeed Abdul Qadar uh, told DT Next that he had seen the unidentified flying objects in Kuda Kalam since 2020 uh, after meeting UFO tracker Sabir and discussing with him. I am more than 100% sure what I saw were UFOs, he said. He believes that the flying behavior of the objects he saw was completely different from what the human technology has achieved so far. The way it stood still, the way it made zigzag movements, and the speed in which it disappeared all were different, he recalled. Well, UFOs appearing around uh, nuclear installations is, is not new news. It's, um, I believe it's the first time I've heard about this in India. Uh, I, I know the famous um, Maelstrom incident, um, Back in, oh gosh, I'm terrible with dates, somewhere between like the 60s and 80s, I think somewhere in there, <laughs> uh, that that famous incident where there was a UFO over a nuclear uh, missile launch facility, Maelstrom, and they disabled 10 of our warheads simultaneously. I know in Russia, they've had incidents um, similar in nature where they actually turned on their, their nuclear weapons. You know, they've been spotted around our aircraft carriers, which are nuclear powered submarines, um, nuclear power stations. It, so it doesn't surprise me that this is not happening just in the U.S. or Russia. It's worldwide. Why are they interested in nuclear power? It's very fascinating. I, I mean, I'm not even going to begin to speculate why. All right. With that down, story number two. So the European Union had a, a little uh, online event here. Um, now, this was hosted by Francisco Guillermo. 
And, and I just want to share a quick uh, excerpt from this uh, session. I think it was all, nearly two hours long. They had some great speakers from all over Europe. Really just kind of, uh, it was broad in, in, in scope. And they spoke about the history of UFOs in the European Union. Um, they, they touched on the ongoing efforts in the U.S. They had a pilot, I think a, uh, a Belgian pilot with, you know, couple of decades of uh, experience share numerous encounters he's had and sightings that he's had and as well as some of his colleagues that have confided in him you know they touched on you know the need for better reporting structures and, and um, ways basically kind of looking at the American for Safe Aerospace Act and trying to figure out how to mimic that over in, you know, in Europe and, and get, you know, the individual nations of Europe to pay attention and, and you know, figure out where they are. Cause they're all at different stages of this, you know, several have already kind of opened their books, you know, like Italy, um, France, uh, Belgium, among others, Sweden, I think, but yeah, it, it's, so it was kind of a holistic look, um, of where they are at. And it was just great to see this discussion happening, you know, in the European parliament, um, pretty much, you know, a wide range of subjects was discussed from how do we study this topic to how do we report it and, and remove the stigma, which I think is happening because <laughs> these discussions are ongoing right now. I mean, the stigma is, is dropping. This is proof of it. So, yeah, I'm just going to show a quick little excerpt here. I think this was from um, Edorado uh, Russo. He was, um, I believe, the Italian from uh, UAP Czech. I'm just going to share this little uh, little excerpt from the uh, event. Now it's work. Well, the historical European context. UAPs are not just an American phenomenon, some may think or believe. It's always been a global phenomenon with sightings and testimonies from all over the world. Europe has always been in a central position as of sighting reports, even before the American public discovered the flying saucers in the summer of 1947, the first post-war wave of unidentified aerial sightings were the ghost rockets over Scandinavia, but also Italy, Greece, and the Mediterranean countries in 1946. And there are a lot of European witnesses. You may ask, how many? We are talking of opinion polls that ask the question, not so many asking the question, who did you see a UFO? And we have some seemingly different percentages that amount to an average, a weighted average of 6.5% people having seen UFOs. If we remain to the European Union countries, that means as much as 29 million people having seen, thinking they have seen a UAP, a UFO, call it as you like. Not all witnesses are reporting their own sightings. Our estimates are that less than 1% of the witnesses are stepping forth and are reporting their sightings. Since the databases of case histories collected by the civilian UAP organizations are presently comprising about 170,000 reports. Is it much? Is it few? It's higher than the total number of USA reports as collected by our sister organizations in the United States of America. We are talking of Europe. Harbor Freight knows skill is important because on any given day, we're all... Their sightings. Since the databases of case histories collected by the civilian UAP organizations are presently comprising about 170,000 reports. Is it much? Is it few? It's higher than the total number of USA reports as collected by our sister organizations in the United States of America. We are talking of Europe.
in a geographical sense, from Portugal to Ukraine, from Norway to Malta. Unidentified aerial phenomena are not regular in their apparitions. Sighting reports are coming in waves with rich or poor years. The first large wave of sightings was in the spring of 1950, and it was a really European one, hitting several countries, Belgium, Italy, Spain, the UK. An even greater UAP panic took place in the autumn of 1954, with thousands of cases, mostly in France, and so on and so on. We had the national waves in the UK in 1967, in Spain, 68, in Italy, 73, in France, 74. Important waves of UAP sightings took place in most European countries along the last 75 years at last. My own country, Italy, suffered such a strong UAP wave in the late 1978 that fishermen refused to go out fishing. Police patrols were sent photographing str strange lights in the sky. Parliamentary questions were asked and the government charged the Italian Air Force to begin a formal collection of testimonies from the public. You can see here one of the national examples with the peaks and the sightings in, in certain years and not in others. Even if 90, 95, even 98 percent of those UAP phenomena are later identified and explained with known natural phenomena or man-made objects, which is precisely the grassroots activity of us UAP investigators, we are left with a small yet not negligible the residue of anomalous cases totaling thousands of UAPs in the strict sense unidentified in a European scale. That is wild. I mean, it, when, when you see it like that, the numbers of, of sightings and, you know, the fact that they think only 1% of people or less than 1% of people are actually reporting their sighting. And yet we're in the, you know, tens of millions of sightings or people that have seen UFOs just in Europe. I mean, that's insane. I mean, we're probably at, if, if I had to, I mean, probably hundreds of millions of people have seen UFOs. I mean, I'm one of them. I've seen some crazy shit. I, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and, you know, the fact that if you look at that graph, things start picking up. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what the last uh, 10 years data looks like. Um, yeah, it, it's fascinating. They go, they go into, uh, you know, a lot more of the history and they go into a couple of specific cases. Really go... Go to um, the page. I'll, I'll link it down below and, and watch. The whole thing is just really, it's great. There's a whole summary of, you know, what UAP are and the history and what's being done right now. Um, really great session that they had over in the European Union. This next story is pretty cool. <laughs> so this is a, um, this is Dr. Stephen Brown. He's a uh, associate teaching professor, uh, Department of Philosophy at Ohio State University. And I, I think I saw this on Reddit. He just having some lectures <laughs> talking about what's going on in Congress with regards to UFOs. Uh, this is this is amazing to see the stigma dropping and you have, you know, we all know about the Avi Loeb's and, and the Gary Nolans, but more and more, you know, professors and, and, you know, educators, the academia is, they don't give a shit anymore. Like, let's talk openly. Our government's talking openly. No one's really paying attention, but those that are, are like having these holy shit moments. Like what, what is going on right now? And it's, it's wild to see pe how people are starting to like get invested. I mean, I watched both of his um, lectures. He's got two of them. I'm going to play a short clip. Uh, he's kind of b builds a case for why you should be paying attention to this. And, you know, lists out the players. You know why these people are these people are taking it seriously. He gives the whole background on on David Grush and really does a great job laying it all out. If you're new to the topic, check these out. I mean, it, it's does a fantastic job laying all the evidence out and and where you know how we got to the point that we're at right now. Uh, so I'm going to play a short clip. Um, just to give you a little taste. 
So one of the things that people are complaining about is that he's not giving us any concrete evidence, right? David Crush has not released anything to the public that any of these photos or videos or anything like that. All he's doing is giving us his word at this point. Um, however, that depends on what you mean by us. He's not giving it to others. Uh, David Grush is doing this by the books, and the detailed information is extremely classified. How classified? Manhattan Project level classified. Uh, extremely classified, like about as classified as you can possibly imagine. However, we can all observe how the people who have access to that classified information behave in response to it. We know who he's told the classified information to, and we can see what they are doing. So my claim is that the public actually does have compelling, though indirect evidence for believing the things that Grush is talking about. And this is what I try to convince you of here. The way I'm going to do that in a nutshell is by telling you who all of these people are. And the fact that they are all taking it seriously, and why that means that you should be taking it seriously too. My claim at the end of the day is that especially any citizen of the United States of America needs to be paying very close attention to what's happening right now, because all of these people are taking David Crush very seriously. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of a breakdown of some government organizations. Um, the legislative branch, right? Uh, these are the people who make the laws. We have a bicameral legislature. All right, I'm going to pause it right there, but it gives you a you know, good idea. He, he, he goes into really good detail about what's going on, who all is paying attention, what the moves that are being made. And it's like, look, I mentioned earlier, we've had four pieces of legislation in the last four years pass because the Gang of Eight, the Senators, uh, Armed Services, Intelligence, they've been briefed. They, they've they spoken with David Grush and numerous other witnesses. Um, was it uh, Marco Rubio mentioned, I think it was last year, that even before Grush, they had people coming to them, telling them this. And then David Grush kind of just, you know, blew up in the, <laughs> the whole thing. There's a lot of people telling them and giving them evidence. They've seen the documents. They've seen the images and, and whatever was it convincing enough for them to actually pass legislation. That's the whole thing people aren't getting is they're not just taking their word for it. They've been shown evidence. That's the whole point. <laughs> and, and the most powerful people in Congress, they believe, they know, they know what's going on. We'll at least have a good idea. So he, Dr. Brown does a awesome job. Like this is kudos, man. This is amazing. Um, so I'm going to link both of his uh, videos or his channel down below. He's only got a couple of videos, but both of them are, are fascinating. Um, he even goes into the the um, what's going down in South America with the Peruvian um, bodies that were shown in the Mexican Congress, and why you probably should be paying attention to that. I'm not going to get into that right now. I am paying attention to it. I'll just leave it at that because I think you should be also. All right, with that down, this is the big Kahuna, the main topic, main story, and it's uh, Congressman Eric Burleson. Had a little chat with uh, Matt Laszlo on Ask a Poll. Actually, it's like almost an hour and a half uh, chat while he was on a layover in the airport. Uh, it's pretty cool. He hopped on the Discord chat um, and was just answering questions. And they went through a bunch of topics here. I mean, everything from you know the chances of a UAP subcommittee and what if the speaker will actually get granted. If not, maybe they'll find a new speaker. Uh, verifying Grush yet again, you know, he spoke with Lou Elizondo who also confirmed what Grush is talking about. And then he reiterated that the, uh, inspector generals have both confirmed most of the allegations, uh, about, you know, what, what Grush, you know, went to them with their complaint about couldn't confirm, you know, the, the underlying essence of, is it non-human intelligence, but he could confirm that the programs he's talking about exist which makes sense. And people have been, I've been reading discussions. People look at that and they're like, Oh, well it's probably just, he wasn't investigating what the programs himself were doing because he probably wasn't allowed to look into them, but he found that the claims of the programs existing above congressional oversight, true. And potentially the, you know, retaliations against various whistleblowers, true. So that alone is, as Burleson said, is that's enough for me to continue pushing, investigating. 
Uh, they spoke about teaming up with Schumer for another go at the UAP Disclosure Act. Uh, you know, he mentioned he had some issues with with the with the current form of the bill. Uh, I can't remember if he actually got into the, which specific uh, reasons. Might have been around eminent domain, but regardless, I, I know um, like even Daniel Sheehan says they've been they've been working on you know round two of that, um, and, and I imagine that they'll they'll get another version passed or, or to reinforce what what did pass. Um, you know, they also touched on having Grush's clearances reinstated and getting him on the payroll in Congress to, you know, better assist them with the investigation. Um, currently, they're kind of the process is so slow because they're having to, you know, schedule these skiff meetings and, and get briefings. And there's only so much that, that, that can be told and. So they're, they're trying to get Grush uh, on the team there. And he, he even mentions, he's like, look, Grush doesn't need a job. It's not like he's going to be coming to work at Congress every day. No, but by doing so, by getting him reinstated, getting, getting him, you know, on the team, you know, so to say, it'll make him available and eligible to have his classification uh, reinstated and, you know, assist in whatever way he can, which is, I think what he wants to do. So, um, uh, Two other big, big nuggets that came from this, um, I think, are the two uh, newest ones, because I think we've heard about the rest of it before. But so one is there um, Burleson is asking for a classified briefing of the arrow report in a skiff, uh, which will happen, I believe, in April. And that they were told of two locations where these programs house craft and biologics. So that was kind of a bombshell. Um, and, and he gets into the fact that, yeah, we we can't just show up. He, he couldn't even talk to his aides about, you know, where these locations are. Um, but they, they're like, well, we can't just show up and they'll move stuff. But I don't think let, let's let's take a quick look at some of these clips. I'm not going to you know show you all of it. It's like an hour and a half, like I said, but I pulled a couple of nuggets just to give you an idea. I, I couldn't personally say that they're lying because to prove they're lying and to say they're lying would mean that I had first-hand knowledge or, you know, either first-hand witness or knowledge or information to, that is either. So far, I have not received it. Um, we have not seen the classified version of the arrow sorry for and i i have requested that we do get a briefing on it it's scheduled for um it's i think it's maybe it's first or second week after we come back mm -hmm. yeah. in middle of april so my staff have scheduled that and then we're reaching out to the uap caucus to to see who else wants to join us in that uh, nice. skip she showed a photo of the UAP that I know that I had not seen before. Um, it was one that was like a, a ring, a light ring that was emanating from a cloud. Um, he showed that uh, he he Lou was pretty blunt. He, he kind of validated what um, David Grush had said. All the claims of David Grush, he said, Lou was pretty much validated. <laughs> Russia testified under oath that he gave the ICIG the exact location of the craft. And allegedly some of these are too big to be moved. What is stopping Congress from appointing like a congressional delegation with the proper clearances to just go to these sites and verify your claims or not? Um, as much as I love this topic, I feel like um, this could be solved, you know. So, we, so, so I, that's an interesting question. Uh, we we have been given two locations um, in a, that uh, that I can't I can't speak of. And what, one of the frustrating things is that what we what we've been told is that I can't even tell my staff about these locations. So if we were trying to set up a you know, a field hearing or an off-site hearing, what I have been told at this point is that by me even telling the staff 
what locations I want to go look at is, is releasing information um, to, to them about this. So this is why this is such a frustrating topic is that all of these silly things keep getting in the way of us getting to the information. And so um, and the other thing I was told is that, um, and I, Rush has said, if we do set up a, year, a field hearings, or we just or we try to surprise visiting, they're going to move. They're they're going to move everything before we get there. Yeah, so that that's pretty crazy. They went into a lot of different topics there. Um, I mean, I think the fact that the ICIG presumably that's the skiff that they actually got these two locations, and um, you know, it, it says that they can't really, you know. I'm, tell his staff because they're classified and they, they can't even go hold a field hearing if they want to go to these locations they'll just move stuff look if they were going to move stuff they probably already moved it i mean they're not dumb they've been hiding this shit for 80 years right so i i, I think they i think they know <laughs> that Congress is on to them. I mean, they've been on to them for what, seven years now. Uh, whistleblowers have been coming forward to uh, Marco Rubio mentioned this last year that they, before Grush even came to them, they've had numerous people telling them about these programs. So this isn't new to them. They've been investigating this behind the scenes for a long time. Right. So I think just announcing that, Oh, we're going to go to these sites. They're going to move stuff. Look, if they wanted to move it, they've already moved it away from these probably dozens of different sites that they've been, you know, hiding stuff. They've probably look at this point. I think they're probably ready for it to be brought out to the public. That's the reason they've let it get this far. They would have squashed this seven years ago when the New York times report came out, but instead we're just kind of slowly trotting along in the middle of disclosure right now. I mean, uh, people, say that you no know, progress has been made in the last decades, right? We're, we're, we're in the same position that we've been for so, however long. And it's like, look, we didn't have Congress people speaking about this openly. We didn't have con congressional hearings. We didn't have them getting briefed in skiffs. We didn't have four pieces of legislation passed. We didn't have the gang of eight former presidents, all these people talking about it. It's in the European Parliament. We've got professors, you know, we got, sure, we got Avi Loeb and, and Gary Nolan. We got the Soul Foundation. We got the Galileo Project. We've got, you know, all, all these things that are happening right now. Legislation being passed about UFOs. I wasn't paying attention to this a year ago. People, more and more people are paying attention and talking about this stuff openly. We have pilots reporting the crap that they're seeing flying every day we're not where we were decades ago. So I don't know why I read that. And I'm like, what? Like me, maybe if you've been engrossed in this for that long, it's hard to see the progress. But as someone who's just started paying attention to this in the past year, I mean, I'm looking at it flying, you know, a top down view. I'm like, wow, so much has happened. Like, really? Like, yeah, the same kinds of things have been said, but nothing's really moved on it. But we've had, legislation we've got investigations ongoing right now like this is insane where we are right now so the fact that we are in the middle of disclosure whether people realize it or not more and more people are are tuning into that fact and i think that's kind of part of the whole slow rollout that is planned unbeknownst to a lot of the actors you know in this play uh you know who knows how much like david grush says he's not a, a part of any disclosure plan and he may very well not be but the fact that, it, you know, Dopser is being held up for some reason, yeah. you know, is it, is it so that he can join Congress and help them, you know, better for, move things forward? It, who knows? But the fact that, you know, they're, they're worried that they'll move the craft if they <laughs> mention these locations. Look, they're paying attention. They know they're, they're We know this information because they've allowed it to come out. They would have squashed this stuff seven years ago when whistleblowers start, you know, and the New York Times article exposed ATIP and OSAP, which weren't even the legacy programs. Those were modern programs. But the fact that those programs were even allowed to happen, they knew that they were going to butt up against the legacy stuff. So they would have squashed this years ago if they weren't ready for the public to start becoming aware 
and for the real information to actually start coming out. So that was a lot of uh, ranting, but anyway, look, it's, I'm interested to see where this goes next. I mean, Lou validating Grush, you know, showed the new photo. Great. <laughs> um, you know, the craft location is going to get this classified skiff briefing on the error report. Burleson is, and presumably other members of the, you know, the UAP caucus. And I'm sure even more members from house oversight potentially will, would be interested. This last skiff briefing had 16 members. That's beyond the scope of, of, you know, uh, the UAP caucus. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see how many are going to tune in. What What is Arrow's classified version going to actually have that the non-classified version didn't? Because remember, they're only Title 10 versus Title 50. They can only be read into so much anyway. So what would their classified thing really have? Maybe, maybe a couple of, maybe they'll throw a couple of, uh, uh, you know, black project programs that they could get, but not the really juicy stuff that we we want them to find, right? Because it's it's Blue Book 2.0, right? Um, and then, you know, Elizondo verified, which, you know, he's done a million, you know, Grush has been verified by everyone, basically, right? Oh, one other little thing I didn't play was, uh, you know, Burleson, you know, mentioned he spoke with both Elizondo and Grush, when he asked why these aliens would travel to Earth for millions of light years just to crash, you know, Grush clarified, well, they don't physically come from outer space, but rather they phase into our existence. And Burleson was like, well, we might as well be talking about angels at this point. And I think people are getting lost in, you know, the semantics. We're, we're so quick to put labels on things so that we can better understand them and compartmentalize them. And it makes it easier to talk about, especially when we're getting into like, you know, physics and, uh, you know, quantum level theory and things that, you know, way, way past, you know, certainly my qualifications, but even the Congress people, they don't, they have, they don't not qualify to discuss this stuff or even understand what phasing into our existence even means. That could just be, you know, how they travel. I mean, anything, you know, you know, the old saying where it's, you know, take technology from now and, you know, send it back a hundred years and it's magic. Well, we'll think about a, you know, a civilization that's a hundred years or a thousand years or a million years or billion years. I mean, we're now seeing that the, the universe is probably twice as old as we thought it was. I mean, we have no idea what our reality really is. I mean, the double slit experiments prove that we've got all these, you know, crazy, like conscious studies going on now, like science is broken. You've, I've, I've heard that a lot. I mean, it, it's, we have no idea. So <laughs> our Congress people are relating these things to, well, yes, they're possibly angel, but he doesn't know what they are and who knows what angels really were. Maybe they were, you know, non-human intelligence. I mean, they are a non-human intelligence potentially. Right. So look, it's easy, makes us feel, you know, like we have a better understanding of things when we can, you know, easily label and, and put them into, you know, things that we already kind of have a grasp on understanding. But at the end of the day, it's, I, I, I feel like when he said that he, I don't know if he necessarily meant that they're supernatural or paranormal or, or what have you, uh, because when it comes down to it, we just, that's just could just be a part of our normal reality that we just don't understand yet. Anyway, I'm kind of ranting. Um, but yeah, that, that'll do it for today's episode. Let me know what you guys think. I mean, I'm, um, I'm excited that Congress is still pushing, you know, discussion is moving forward. I'm just, I'm just getting anxious. I mean, I, I want to know what, when Crush's op-ed is supposedly coming out. I know, uh, Corbell and, and Knapp teased that maybe something even better than that was, you know, they were pivoting to do something with maybe have a bigger impact. You know, people get pissy when, when it's coming soon and trust me, bro. And da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh my God, man, you guys aren't like paying attention to the big picture of what's been going on. And people can't just burn sources and, and drop everything they have. You know, you know, when I used to watch, you know, the news when I was a kid and 
he'd have a reporter on, well, sources tell me that such and such is that it's like, that was just like a normal thing. You know, you, people talk about their sources and, and they only can give as much as they are, you know, approved to give on, you know, cause they don't want to give up their sources and, and cause then they won't be sources anymore. Right. People, you know, this topic is, is it's wild because this is so far beyond any typical news story, right? This changes our fundamental understanding of existence and reality and everything, right? So of course people get excited and they want want everything now, especially in this this world where we have instant gratification and we can click a few buttons and have whatever we want delivered to our door the very next day or even the same day in some cases, but yeah, people people need to calm down, you know, go on a nice walk, enjoy their life, hug their loved ones. Stop being so so pissy with one another, and uh, I think we'll all be a little bit better off. Anyway, that does it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about all these stories in the comments down below, and I'll see you on the flip side.